Thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. I'm here today in New York, a snowy New York, and they've all been told, basically, don't leave your houses, a snow bomb's coming, and the place is deserted. But it's been quite a busy day on Brexit today. Both sides positioning very clearly for what they want the final deal to be. Let's listen to what Donald Tusk had to say today, bearing in mind, of course, that he had a big meeting with the Prime Minister last week. Now coming to the core of our future economic relationship. During my talks in London last Thursday and in her speech last Friday, Prime Minister Theresa May confirmed that the UK will leave the single market, leave the customs union and leave the jurisdiction of the ECJ. Therefore, it should come as no surprise that the only remaining possible model is a free trade agreement. I hope that it will be ambitious and advanced and we will do our best as we did with other partners such as Canada recently. But anyway, it will only be a trade agreement. Hmm. So, he's talking about a free trade agreement. And you may well say, well, isn't that exactly what the British government wants? Well, does rather depend what that includes in that agreement. It also, of course, rather depends what price he wants us to pay for it. Because having sounded so generous, Tusk then went on to say this. This positive approach doesn't change the simple fact that because of Brexit we will be drifting apart. In fact, this will be the first FTA in history that loosens economic ties instead of strengthening them. Our agreement will not make trade between the UK and the EU frictionless or smoother. It will make it more complicated and costly than today for all of us. This is the essence of Brexit. Well, OK, so it's going to be a free trade agreement. Um, it's going to be more difficult. Uh, Philip Hammond countering back the other way. Could you see what's important about what Tusk was saying? He was simply talking about goods. He wasn't talking about services. Philip Hammond tried to make the alternative case about financial services. Let's hear him. The UK financial services hub is an engine that powers the real economy, not just in the UK, but right across Europe. Because the fact is that the UK financial services hub is not just a British asset, but a European asset too, supporting businesses, savers and citizens across the European Union, serving the whole of our continent and the world beyond. So once again, the British government trying to sound generous, aiming at a full, rounded trade deal, and he went on to really mirror the Prime Minister's demands from last week. Today, I want to build on the vision the Prime Minister delivered on Friday. I want to explain why it makes sense for both the UK and the EU that we continue to collaborate closely on cross-border financial services. I want to challenge the assertion that financial services cannot be part of a free trade agreement, to set out why it is in the interest of both the UK and the EU27 to ensure that EU businesses and citizens can continue to access the UK financial services hub. So here we are. We've got the Chancellor, the Prime Minister saying, let's have a rounded trade deal, Tusk being perfectly clear that they will have a free trade agreement with us on goods, but not on services. But here's the kicker. What Tusk also went on to say, and it's in the document, is they want continued access to our fishing waters. And I'm asking you, you know, is surrender of our fisheries a small price to pay? for us to have a free trade deal on goods. And I want to know what you think about that. You can let me know by calling me on 03456060973. You know, because I've always taken the view that fisheries is the acid test of Brexit. Unless we get back our territorial waters, frankly, my view is Brexit would have been portrayed. But you may think we're going to have to give this concession and perhaps many more Bearing in mind, of course, we've already promised to pay £40 billion as a leaving bill. And if that's your view, text me to 84850. Um, and maybe you've reached the point of thinking uh, that they are being so...
so unreasonable that perhaps the point has come to simply walk away, in which case tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And, of course, you can watch us on Facebook and comment there too. Let's get our first opinion on this. Ellis is calling from Manchester. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. How are you? Are you well? I'm well, yes, I am. <laughs> but but do you know something, Ellis? For the whole 25 years that I was involved with UKIP and referendum campaigns and everything else, it seemed to me that no sector of our national life had been betrayed to the extent that our fishing industry had. Something like a hundred thousand jobs lost in fishing and fishing-related industries. Uh, something, Ellis, which if we took back would be worth, estimates vary, some as low as £3 billion a year, some as high as £6 billion a year. And, and, and I just, I think for every coastal community in this country, if we were prepared to carry on with a common current fisheries policy, Ellis, I think they'd feel betrayed. Um, yeah, Nigel, I must admit, I, I'm not as, as clued up on the common fisheries policy as you, you are in Manchester. We, we don't, it's not a... No, sure. Either, <laughs> um, but the point I was going to make is, for me, I think today was a step in the right direction for, for Tusk. At least we're now starting to see a little bit of sense. We, we've asked for a free trade agreement for a long time. Yes. At least um, I, I campaigned and I've spoke to you previously on, on this matter and said that, that I think moving... So free trade agreement is good. Now, I think some of what he said actually made sense, and I can't believe those words are actually leaving my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, we, look, when we voted to leave the European Union, we knew that trade with the EU would probably change. We, that, that was one of the things, and, and one of the many things, one of the very few things, in fact, that the, that the uh, Remain campaign didn't make up and exaggerate. I think the point I want to make is deliberately, you, you'd hit the nail on the head with regards to goods and services. Now, goods and services are so important because our main export is our services, our financial right. services. And the EU's main export to us is their goods in their cars and et cetera, et cetera. So I think that that is a... There's a work to be done, but I think, personally, it's a step in the right direction, and I'd love to be your thoughts on <coughs> well, that. Well, I'll tell you what, Alice. I went to see, on the 8th of January this year, you may remember, I went to see Monsieur Barnier in his uh, office in the European Commission. And what was perfectly clear to me from that meeting is, yes, of course, they will have a free trade agreement with the United Kingdom on goods. Why? Well, I'll tell you why, Ellis. They sell us a lot of motor cars, a lot of wine, a lot of chocolate, a lot of cheese. In fact, they're selling us about £80 billion worth a year, more goods than we are selling them. And when I went on to say to Mr Barnier, well, Presumably that would be part of a rounded, grown-up trade deal. Do you know what he said? Go on. N never. Never. Well, that, well, as long as our Prime Minister stands tough, and um, uh, uh, as much as she has flipped and flattered around on this, mm -hmm. um, it, she is at least finally, she has stood pretty much to the guns that she set out. And as long as she sticks to the guns that yep, it, okay. no, I get it that. has to be fair then I think yep. we, we might be along the right lines. So, so right now, Ellis, you've got an offer on the table, I guess we would have to say, from Tusk and the EU today, of a free trade agreement mm -hmm. on goods, but not to include services and to keep access to our fishing waters. Does that sound like a good deal to you? Absolutely not. No, completely no. not. But Fine. So we stick to our guns. A good deal for them, but not a good deal for us. I agree. I agree. I agree. Ellis, I thank you. Keith is calling, a brand new caller from Peckham in South London. Good evening, Keith. Good evening, Nigel, and thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Not one bit. So, Keith, the fishing industry, here goes the argument, right? The fishing industry is tiny. There's only a few thousand people involved in the fishing industry. If we have to throw away the fishing industry um, as, a, as, a, as a bargaining chip in order to get free trade on motor cars, some people think, Keith, it's a price worth paying. It's an absolute disgrace to this country. Is it? It's an absolute disgrace. And I'll tell you what, I'm sorry, I've been listening to your remarks over the past months. I've been listening to the MPs in the House of the Parliament. Yep. I've been listening to the EU. And I think this country's been stitched up really badly. All they're interested in is two things. Free movement and our money. They're not mm. worried about anything else. And now, to put the cherry on the cake for them is they want our fisheries. It's betraying every fisherman within our country. 
And I'll tell you what, our MPs need to start earning their money by sticking up for Theresa May and stop backstabbing her. Mm. I'm well, sorry, but that's why I... Think. No, no, listen, I completely understand how you feel. And, and well, the thing is... We've been fighting with our MPs. Oh, someone, listen, someone... Hang on. We won a, a, a very slim majority. We won the, the referendum. Yep. I voted in London. It's a wasted vote in London because everybody in London voted to stay in. St I'm not saying they're stupid, but Europe, the European Union now, but Blair and Major and all the rest of them put us into, is corrupt. It's corrupt beyond reprieve now. And they want to extend it to Turkey and all these other nations. Well, it's let's just... Let's just keep... I mean, the point is that at the moment we have negotiating positions, right? Yeah. And they are demanding more and more and more concessions from us. Because um, and our MPs are fighting between themselves, so they're laughing at us. Well, they're certainly laughing at us, but we're yeah. going we, we, to need our Prime Minister no longer to be Theresa the appeaser. She's going to have to stand up and stand up for our national interests. Thank you. in there, not David Davis, but you... Well, thank. Well, you never know what could happen in the future. It looks unlikely right now. I thank you for your call. And loads of messages and thoughts coming in. Philip says, Nigel, no surprise. It really is time to walk away. No money, no deal. Anne from Poland says, Nigel, it won't stop with fisheries. I'm now sick of all this. The EU Tusk wants everything. How strange. Tusk has a small memory how Poland used to be. Let's just leave. Quite a few of you saying that. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show exclusive in LBC. It's now 7.15. Nick Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Crown prince of a country that has killed 50,000 people and on an average day about 130 children. Yes, welcome to the leader of Saudi Arabia, but is that welcome appropriate? Millie Thornberry is shadow foreign secretary. We should not be selling arms to countries where there is a good chance that they will be used against civilians in other countries or for internal repression. Now, that is the law and that's what we should comply with. You look at the wedding that are being bombed, the funerals that are yes. being bombed, the agricultural land. And what is more, it's increased. Nick Ferrari at breakfast every weekday morning from 7, only on LBC. Malware, phishing, identity theft. Every day, cybercrime is getting cleverer. With criminals deploying new techniques that could damage your business. For example, this ad has been voiced by me, a professional actress, and me, a synthesized AI copy. Could you tell who was which? At Hiscox, it's this type of threat we make it our business to know. That's why our specialist business insurance helps you stay one step ahead of cybercrime. To find out more and to see what lines were real, go to hiscox.co.uk forward slash one step ahead. Hiscox. Ever onwards. <laughs> Calling all first-time buyers. Come to Galliard Homes for double stamp duty savings on our brand new apartments from under £150,000. Many available with help to buy. Stamp duty was abolished last year for first-time buyers on homes up to £300,000. And we will double your stamp duty saving up to that amount. For example, your saving now on a purchase of £300,000 is £5,000, and we will double that to £10,000. Our market-leading homes are strategically located in and around London, close to stations and the Tube, to ensure you connect to the capital. To buy a new apartment with double stamp duty savings from under £150,000, call 0203 770 6300 or visit galliardhomes.com. That's galliardhomes.com. Galliard, getting you on the ladder. Terms and conditions apply. Your future is here. The Global Academy, a forward-thinking state school for 14 to 19-year-olds interested in a media career. Visit globalacademy.com to find out more. Dreaming of running your own business? Why not be your own boss with the support of an established brand? Visit the British and International Franchise Exhibition at Olympia, London on the 9th and 10th of March and discover a wide range of franchise businesses. Take advantage of over 60 presentations, talk to experts and build yourself a better future. For free tickets, go to franchisetickets.co.uk. That's franchisetickets.co.uk. You know your Baroque from your rock. Contemporary jazz from your German underground progressive minimal techno. But do you know your pension options? 
PensionWise is a service set up by the government to provide free, impartial guidance about your pension pot. If you're over 50, call 0800 138 1888 to book your free telephone or face-to-face appointment. PensionWise. Get to know your options. Relax. It's Trust a Trader. They have all the tradespeople you can think of, reputable and reviewed, so you always get a job well done. Visit trustatrader.com. Trust this is LBC, The Nigel Farage Show, live from New York. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. So let's add this all up, shall we? Donald Tusk today, more clearly than anybody from the European Union before, has made what on the face of it appears to be a generous offer. He wants there to be a free trade agreement between the United Kingdom and the European Union on goods. And hooray, I hear you say. But here's the slight downside. In return for that, he of course wants us to pay the 40 billion sterling exit fee. He has announced today, very clearly, that he wants to continue under the common fisheries policy for foreign fleets to catch the vast majority of fish swimming in British territorial waters. And, and it was very clear in the text that was put out today from the European Union that for all of this, we're going to have to maintain exactly the same regulations as the rest of the European Union. Otherwise, they say we might have a competitive advantage. Well, I thought that's what we were voting for in many ways. So the cost of this is starting to build up. And here's the real kicker. James Forsyth, quite a well-connected journalist, writes for The Spectator, says in his column that is out today uh, that actually he now thinks the government's prepared to make concessions on immigration as well. And I'm asking you, is tariff-free access for the European market to us and back on goods? Is it worth this increasingly long list of things that, as I see it, we're going to have to give away? I can't believe it's worth it. I want the Prime Minister to stand up. The trouble is, you see, if you appease bullies like the European Union in Brussels, they'll always come back and want more. That's my view. I'm going to Spain, that bastion of democracy, John, who lives in a place called Los Beliches. Where is that, John? It's about 30 miles East, uh, west, sorry, of um, Malaga. It's, it's, right. It's a, lo- it's a lovely seven-mile bay of fishing villages, Carvajal, Torreblanca, Los Beliches. Excellent. But on the fishing, yeah. on the fishing I've got a couple of points to make. I've got another point to make on, um, on the, uh, the, 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 the tariff-free trade. But if on the fishing, mm. I would have thought, and, I, and you can put me right here, I would have thought that for a start... Because our fishing fleet's been decimated, we don't have the capacity to fish. And B, we certainly don't have a navy to actually patrol it. So I would have thought we could actually do a, a time-limited uh, time limited job so we can build up our fleet back up again and probably build up the vessels that we need to patrol our fishing waters. Well, well John, the point I wanted to yeah, make no, 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 listen, listen, that's a very yeah, fair point. It's a very fair point. We don't have the capacity to fully exploit UK fisheries right now, but one of our main aims from Brexit should be to rebuild it. So we could, rather than just saying to the Dutch and French fleets, you're out next Wednesday, we could phase it in and be reasonable about it. I totally understand and accept that point, but that is not what, that is not what Barnier asked for, or, or Barnier and Tusk, asked for today and my slight problem john with this is that fishing was betrayed back in 1972 i don't want to see that repeated yeah i could agree again one more final point which always irritates me Mm. effectively if we'd never joined the eu and we were trading now with europe on a wto basis yeah they, we wouldn't be given concessions to give them a free trade agreement. They'd be biting our arm off to actually give us concessions to come and join them. It, it's, it's really an Irish situation, to put it politely. It's quite ridiculous. Well, and until, until and why people, why people listen to Barnier, Tusk, and Juncker and Vestard is beyond belief. Because I certainly believe they're going to be peripheral in the arguments. And I saw the Hungarian guy came up with something, and Beppo came up with something. When it comes down to personal personal, personal uh, businesses, corporations, and by, they're not going to allow a bunch of bureaucrats or eurocrats who've never, who've never, who've never had a, a decent idea in their life and just taken money. They're not going to allow their businesses well, to Well, that's be, the hope, John. They'll be thrown out. The hope is, John, that the British government play hardball 
And towards the end of this process, the Commission position crumbles because the member states put pressure on them. That is the hope, I suppose. Bound but ha- I think it's hope. I think it's bound to happen. Well, I, I hope you're Barnier. right. I can see Barnier having 100 tonnes of manure on his front lawn. Have you ever known in your lifetime, have you ever known in your lifetime a, a, a French polit- politician stand up to the farmers? Well, no, that's right. And actually, yeah. actually, the French farmers have a lot to lose from Brexit Absolutely. and not having a rounded deal. They have a hell of a lot to lose. No, no, John, you make that point well. You make that point well. And it's worth, John, just make it, making this point, that the big winners of the Italian election, the Five Star Movement and indeed the Lega, the two big winners, both of them have said in the last 24 hours they want as generous a trade deal to be offered to the United Kingdom as is possible. So there is, at last, a bit of pressure coming on Barnier. John from Spain, thank you very much indeed. Malcolm says, the UK have done all the running. Time to clear the table, pack our bags, take the phone off the hook and let the EU do some running for once. They have conceded nothing. Malcolm, they have conceded absolutely nothing. I agree with that completely. Helen says not taking back control of our waters would be a betrayal of Brexit. Mark says the idea of negotiations is for both parties to move and as far as I can tell the EU haven't moved on anything. That's not negotiating. Well they haven't as yet Mark. You are absolutely right but 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 if the British government play hardball If we can get voices like big Italian politicians and maybe even, you know, German companies and French companies putting pressure on the Commission, maybe, just maybe, their position will collapse. But we, I think, are going to have to get a lot tougher soon. Robert is a new caller from Norwich. Good evening, Robert. Oh, good evening, Nigel. So, a free trade agreement. Have on the face of it, they been generous today? No. uh, My hometown is Lowestoft. And it, oh, it suffered very much from the 1972 uh, yeah. trail. Yeah. Um, the has very small fl- fishing fleet now, and part of the problem is it's lost a lot of industries that are associated with the fishing industry, like shipbuilding and uh, the communication links from Lower Stoff to other parts of the country, particularly rail, have actually withered. Now, the other thing about it, when it was a, a thriving fishing port, it was quite attractive because it's also a seaside resort, and that's the sort of thing that people like to see when they go on holiday. Now, most of the, some of the most deprived areas in this country are the coastal towns, and Lowestoft, one or two of the wards there, I believe, are some of the most deprived in the country. We hear a lot about the northeast and how it's tough in the northwest, etc., but there's other parts of the country, including places oh, yeah. like Margate and yeah. uh, oh, yeah. Tilbury, where you can see that people are, are living at a very low standard of living. Yeah, so I think we very... shouldn't, Robert, Robert, we shouldn't pretend that fishing back to Lowestoft would solve all of Lowestoft's problems, no, but, it it would make, but it would make a heck of a difference, wouldn't it? Oh, well, the local MP, Peter Aldous, is very much uh, supporting the push towards uh, bringing in the uh, fishing industry again and building it back up again, and the uh, other industries that one would like to see associated with that. But... It's part of an overall picture because there's quite a lot of work gone in to raising the standards in the schools locally there, for example. And it's very important that you have this sort of, I hate to use the word critical mass, but this critical mass of thriving variety of industries which we used to have, which then can uh, support and justify having necessary infrastructure improvements. For example, they're planning to dual the A47 all the way from Peterborough via Great Yarmouth down to Lower Stoft, and that will make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. We also need to rebuild the rail as well. But we need, uh, but we also need people there earning money um, and having money in their pockets to spend. And the betrayal of the fishing industry has damaged Lower Stoft. Robert, I thank you for your call. I thank you very much. I'm going to move on. Going to get up, Andrew, a new caller to the show from Yorkshire. Good evening, Andrew. How's it going, Nigel? You all right? It's going well. So, is it reasonable to give away the fishing industry? so that the Germans can sell their motor cars here free of tariffs? Not, not so. You cannot do that. It's absolutely... The problem is, there's, for an island, there is so much naivety to what is actually so that we're surrounded by. I mean, I'm a sports fisherman. I'm not commercial. Yep. yep. I know well, so am I. So am I, there. Andrew. I know you are. I know you are. We yep. have a lot in common in that sense. Um, there's a... The problem is, people don't realise what's actually going on. And I'll go down to Milford Haven and I'll go shark fishing, just yep. sport fishing. Yep. I'll be sat there in a, in a town that 
has got hardly any income coming in whatsoever. It's surrounded by thriving fisheries. You can go out, you can get... You could fill fish boxes and make so much money, yet they, the locals, can't do it. But the Belgian trawlers can go out there, fill the boxes, come in, and as long as they are technically moored up, they can sell their fish to us. Why? Why? Can well, this is because... Yeah, this is because... And I, know, and I know what it is, but I'm getting... I've run, you yeah, know, I've got I, I, I mean, if you, look at the, if you look at the Eastern... If you look at the Eastern um, English Channel, for argument's yeah. sake, the cod quota is divided up yeah. there. The last time I looked, 18 months yeah. ago, so I doubt it's changed much. Mm. Uh, the last time I looked, it was 77% of the cod quota goes to the French and yeah. 8% goes to the British fleet and the rest goes to the Dutch and the Belgians. And you think, well, hang on a second. You know, we should have 50% of that. Now, there are uh, reasons of historic levels of catch or whatever, but the fact is, yeah, yeah. Andrew, the fact is, if you look at Norway, across the other yeah. side of the North Sea from where you are now, yeah. not only, not only do they have a booming f commercial fishing industry, yeah. they have an absolute massive booming sports fishing yeah. industry as well. Yeah. They manage their own waters. They have strict mm. rules. There are no discards mm. of dead fish. And any foreign yeah. boat, any foreign boat caught fishing illegally in Norwegian waters at the point of a gun is taken in to one of their ports. And, and, and this, I, this is my other point, sorry. Yeah, go on. I, uh, look, you, you'll know yourself and a lot of people who are on won't understand this, we have our quota over here, and the amount of fish that is thrown away and just chucked back to sea just just for the fact that the EU says that they can't take them. And, and people will say, well, don't go target those fish. Well, it's a, it it's but the trouble is in the North Sea... In the North yeah. Sea, it's a mixed fishery. You can't avoid it. Andrew, thank you for the call. Thank you for the passion. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC, live from New York City. It's now 7.30 in time for the news with Thomas Watts. Police have confirmed they're treating the suspected poisoning of a former Russian spy in Salisbury as attempted murder. Officers say they believe a nerve agent was used on Sergei and Yulia Skripal, who've been in a critical condition since Sunday. Jeremy Corbyn's accused British military advisers of directing the war in Saudi Arabia's operations in Yemen. The Saudi Crown Prince is on a three-day visit to the UK. The leader and deputy leader of the far-right group Britain First have been jailed for religiously aggravated harassment. Paul Golding's been sentenced to 18 weeks and Jada Franson just over eight months. LBC weather, a mix of clear, uh, clear spells and showers tonight. Rain and some hill snow moving eastwards across Wales into southern and central England, a low of minus one. There's been an accident on the A13 and it's queuing into town from Orsett Clock towards Stifford Clays Road. Out of town it's queuing between Tilbury and Lakeside. Tooting High Street is closed in both directions between Tooting Broadway Station and Blackshaw Road for some emergency repairs. And on Marlebone Road there are two lanes closed eastbound at Park Crescent causing queues on the Marlebone flyover because of water main work. Looking at the trains there's no service on Hull trains between Kings Cross and Doncaster. LBC Travel, I'm Charlotte Downs. This is LBC. Feel like an adventure? Then come on a journey through an exotic Arabian market to a sultan's palace and a breathtaking cave of wonders before you discover a whole new world soaring through the stars on a flying carpet. Come on in. Let the magic begin with Aladdin, Disney's spectacular West End musical. Book now for Easter at aladdinthemusical.co.uk. This March, see over 200 classical musicians live on stage at the world-famous Royal Albert Hall, featuring state-of-the-art lights, lasers, and a thundering indoor firework finale to Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture, accompanied by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Experience classical spectacular at the Royal Albert Hall from the 15th to the 18th of March. Get your tickets for classical spectacular now at royalalberthall.com. Don't miss Finding Your Feet, the British comedy everyone's talking about. It was absolutely wonderful. Very funny. The whole cast were amazing. It's the feel-good film of the year. Imelda Staunton, Timothy Spall, Celia Imry and Joanna Lumley. Who is going to argue with that? Yeah. I would definitely say it again. We loved it. <laughs> Finding Your Feet in cinemas now. Crikey, the boiler's gone again. Cold showers. Oh, I'll have to get someone round. 
tidy up and get better biscuits. I've only got malted milk. I can't have no shower. I've got Zumba on Wednesday. <sighs> relax. Relax. It's trust a trader. Blooming lovely tradespeople who do the job right. You pop in your postcode and find great tradespeople right on your doorstep. <coughs> oh, oh, he's here. Get the party rings out. Visit trustatrader.com. Last year in England, more than a quarter of a million workplaces took on an apprentice. I'm here with James Nevin from Blue Engineering to find out how apprenticeships have benefited their business. As a young business in a competitive industry, it's not always easy to find the right talent. I first started looking into apprenticeships when the business pretty much started. Apprentices bring new ideas and their own creativity to the business, which we found gives us a real competitive edge. Once they're up and running, they really are a powerful force within a company. To find out how apprenticeships can work for your business, phone 08000 150 600 for free advice or search Hire an Apprentice. Hello and welcome to Scam or Smart. We'll play two investment pitches. You guess which one's a scam. OK, here's the first. Well, this could offer a good counterbalance to your current portfolio. Interesting. Now for the second. This is something that will appeal to a successful investor like yourself. So, which one's the scam? Well, it was the second pitch. Hard to tell? That's why smart investors always check the warning list from the Financial Conduct Authority. Search Scam Smart. This is LBC, The Nigel Farage Show. Live from New York. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Today was the day that the EU formally offered us a Canada-style free trade deal on goods, but goods only. But boy, they are making a lot of demands uh, for that to be put in place, uh, including continued access to Britain's fisheries. But before I return to that, a speech yesterday in Brussels by Ryanair's boss, Michael O'Leary, who said he wants to create an opportunity by making people realise they're no longer going to have cheap holidays, and he's suggesting that it's in our interest, by which he means the European Union, not for a long period of time, but to ground the aircraft, to stop people being able to leave the country. Um, and, uh, you know, he thinks by doing this, he'll persuade the average British voter they were lied to in the Brexit debate, and that all changed their minds. Well, I have to say, Mr O'Leary, you're pretty much true to form, aren't you? There was a time a few years ago when you called the European Commission the evil empire, and you said in the first referendum on Dublin, that the Irish should vote no. For some reason, you become a convert to the European project. I'm sure that money and deals have absolutely nothing to do with it. I'm sure it's genuine in every way. And, of course, I have had the misfortune to meet Mr O'Leary in the past, and I think, frankly, what he's saying here is simply disgusting. But that's my view. Let's continue our conversation. Is it worth... Is it... Is giving away fishing... Given there aren't many people in it, a small price to pay in return for a free, free trade deal on goods. And Alex, as a new caller from Acton, is going to try and answer that question. Good evening. Hello, Nigel. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. But I, I do feel for our coastal communities, Alex. I do feel for our commercial fishermen. And I do feel for those men and women that try and earn money out of the leisure fishing industry as well. Yeah, so do I. So why didn't you vote? at all there was 42 fisheries commission meetings and you only attended one of them because none of them were legislative alex none of them had any force of power whatsoever it was a complete waste of time really i find that hard to believe how would you know none of it there? no 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 alex when i was there nothing on the on the fisheries committee had any legislative force whatsoever it was simply a talking shop, and an utter waste of time. Now, now you could argue that since then, uh, the European Parliament has a bit more of a say over fisheries than it did going back. Uh, but frankly, the argument that we should, Alex, try to reform the common fisheries policy from within, to reform the common agricultural policy from within, to reform the EU from within, um, is one... We've basically been trying to do this for 40 years. we failed completely. And in the end, Alex... I think that's why we voted to leave, isn't it? I think there's a lot of reasons why people voted to leave, but I don't think that mm. fisheries was one of the main ones. But still, well, um, so you're saying that as members you tried to influence it 
and you think that you had more of a say by not showing up to the votes. It, it, it had oh, no... Hold on, Nigel, hold on. No force. Still claiming expenses, not going to the votes. You could have had a say, but you no, no, no. Actually, Alex, actually, Alex, if I wasn't there signing in on the day, I wasn't claiming expenses for that day, so I'd probably save the taxpayer money. I, I, you know, I, I didn't bother with it, because it had well, thank no... You, Nigel. Thank you for saying It had no... It had no legislative force whatsoever. But, Alex, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, under international law, the 1976 agreement, every nation-state in the world is entitled to have 200 miles of fishing waters off their coast as their own, or the median line with the next state. You could argue, Alex, that the fish that swim in British territorial waters are, in many ways, the greatest renewable resource we possess as a nation. Doesn't it make sense to take control of that again? Um, good question, Nigel. Mm. Uh, it, it, I don't know, because I haven't really looked at the 1970, whatever it was that you just quoted. 76 is when international law was, 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 was kind of rewritten on this, yeah. It yeah. probably would be worth it, but at the same time, we can't just depend on the fish that we have. What, what's our main export? Cod? No, we import cod, believe it or not. Well, so um, what's our main export? Well, we're shelf... Case? Shellfish we export, and in fact, to be honest with you, well, it's a lot of fish, a lot of fish that are caught, uh, certainly in southern England and southwestern England, are sold through the market in Boulogne, uh, because our own demand has fallen, but cod, we're a massive net. Most of the fish and chips, most of the cod sold in fish and chip shops in our country, actually comes from Iceland. And you think it would be a good idea to get rid of all the regulations that you're talking about, the 200 miles... And well, what I think, Alex, what, what, is what I think, ours. what I think is that we ought to have a fisheries policy uh, that not only is good for jobs and good for income, but actually that environmentally makes a lot more sense than what we've had over the course of the last few years. Nobody, Alex, can, nobody can tell you how many, how many, but it is hundreds of thousands of tonnes of prime fish have been thrown back dead into our seas. It's time for a change. On a broader point, Alex, do you think Can the I EU are now being thing, generous? Do you uh, think the EU are now being generous, offering a free trade agreement on goods? What did you expect to happen, Nigel? Did this you, did you think they were going to give us everything we wanted? No, no, I think... And, OK, hold on, Nigel, I've got They were always going to, they were always going to want to sell their motor cars here, weren't they? But, but, Nigel, but isn't I it time we dug thing? in? You've said lots of yeah. things already, but go on, one more. You say that it would be beneficial... But, um, see, uh, what would you do if they wouldn't let us go and fish in their territories? Well, frankly, Alex, they haven't got any fish anyway. So what are we importing? How, where are we importing the cod from? Iceland? Fair enough, Iceland, Iceland, yeah. OK. Yes, and Iceland, they, Iceland, Alex, who beat us... Fish? Iceland beat us in a cod war, OK, Spain back in the 1970s. Fish? Sorry? Spain, Spain doesn't have any fishing? Uh, Spain has some fishing, but nowhere near enough to satisfy its own domestic demand. Alex, I've got to move on. Um, John says, fishermen voted to leave in order to get the fishing waters back. It would be a betrayal of our hard-working fishermen if we agree to this. John, it's not just those that are fishing now, because they're few in number. I want loads of people, thousands more people, getting into this industry. And, and you know something? If we carry on with the CFP as it currently is, and certainly looking at some of the quotas that are given to the small under 10 metre fleet, frankly, in five or ten years' time, there'll be very little of it left. That is how bad it is in many parts currently of the British fishing industry. Elizabeth is... And Alex there, Alex there, he doesn't think fishing's that important. And maybe, maybe he's right in terms of a total numbers of people in this country involved with it. But surely, symbolically, it says everything. I wonder what Elizabeth, living in Clacton-on-Sea, thinks of this debate. Good evening, Elizabeth. Oh, good evening, Nigel. Well, I'm absolutely disgusted with your previous caller. Living in a coastal town and I get fresh fish every week from our local fishermen, they're yep. very, very angry. And I was saying to your uh, producer or helper, mm. yeah. um, I was, where's Michael Gove? He was the one who came on and said, we're having our waters back six miles or we can have 200 miles back. I haven't heard him today. Well, well done you. Well, well done you, Elizabeth, because here we are, all of us, trying to, those of us who think this is outrageous are trying to put pressure on Theresa May, but it is Michael Gove's direct responsibility. He has... 
he has made some positive comments about fishing and getting back at our waters. And don't forget, he grew up in a family... In yeah, but they, and they were fish merchants, weren't they? Exactly, Nigel. But I'm worried, I'm not sure if you are as well, that she is going to cave in over this because that Philip Hammond is going to say, oh, we need the money from the boats to pay us. But I hope she doesn't because if she caves in, she's just a wet lettuce. And I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you, Nigel, yep. people are very, very angry over this. It's the Metropolitan Elite in London like your previous caller, who do not realise what has happened to our coastal towns. Yep. They all come down here and want fish and chips, where it would be nice for them to eat our own fish. And the local fishermen are very, very angry, and she will be booted out if she caves in. I agree with you. I think we should eat fish we catch in our own waters as much as possible. I really do. Thank you. Chris tweets to say, I'm from a fishing family, four generations old, before the CFP. Before it, before the CFP, the fleet in our village numbered 150 plus. Now, I'd be surprised if there's 30 there. Uh, I can speak to anyone in the fishing industry and we will never allow anyone to surrender it. Well, it's been surrendered, Chris. The point about Brexit is, it was surrendered. Brexit is about getting it back. And I thought that everyone that voted in that referendum realised that actually the symbolism of fishing was huge. Look, I went up the Thames that day, Kate Hoey and I, at the front of La Flotilla, boats that had come from all over the country, going up to protest outside Parliament, going up to say, give our industry a break, we're struggling, we're going out of business, to be abused and shouted at by Sir Bob Geldof and a lot of very wealthy people on their own champagne fueled boat. It just about, to me, summed up what the Brexit argument was all about. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, live from New York, exclusively here on LBC, and it's now 7.45. This is LBC. The internet is no longer confined to computers and mobile devices. Many everyday objects now have network connectivity. The Internet of Things is developing rapidly and businesses need to future-proof their networks to stay ahead. BT can help keep you connected to customers and people with connection, collaboration and security solutions, whatever the size, sector or ambitions of your business. Find out more and enter to win an Apple MacBook Air at lbc.co.uk. This March, see over 200 classical musicians live on stage at the world-famous Royal Albert Hall, featuring state-of-the-art lights, lasers, and a thundering indoor firework finale to Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture, accompanied by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Experience classical spectacular at the Royal Albert Hall from the 15th to the 18th of March. Get your tickets for classical spectacular now at royalalberthall.com. Dreaming of running your own business? Why not be your own boss with the support of an established brand? Visit the British and International Franchise Exhibition at Olympia, London on the 9th and 10th of March and discover a wide range of franchise businesses. Take advantage of over 60 presentations, talk to experts and build yourself a better future. For free tickets, go to franchisetickets.co.uk. That's franchise tickets. .co.uk. The Cheltenham Festival. Speed, stamina and sheer guts. It's got it all, including this Coral Super Offer. We're refunding all losing bets as a free bet on the Supreme Novices Hurdle. Coral, jump in. Download the Coral app from App Store and Google Play when the fun stops, stop. 18 plus, online and telephone. Applies to first real money win or win part of each way single of £1 plus. Max refund £25 by 12pm, 14th of March. Valid for 24 hours. One free bet per customer. Full terms at coral.co.uk. Namaste. Welcome to Mala. London's unique Indian dining experience, located at the historic St. Catherine's Docks, the hidden jewel of London. Marvel at the authentic antiques, murals and paintings from India's rich history. Then enjoy the finest Indian cuisine, traditionally prepared with recipes that have been handed down through the centuries. For a truly authentic taste of India, visit malarestaurant.com. You know your 70s. From your 80s, from your 90s, from your noughties. Let's go, it's a... But do you know your pension options? PensionWise is a service set up by the government to provide free, impartial guidance about your pension pot. 
If you're over 50, call 0800 138 1888 to book your free telephone or face to face appointment. Pension Wise, get to know your options. Coming up at 8 on LBC, Clive Bull. Police say a nerve agent was used in the attempted murder of an ex-Russian spy and his daughter. Should this raise questions about Britain's relationship with Russia? Clive Bull on LBC. This is LBC, The Nigel Farage Show. Live from New York. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. The EU bigwigs have made it clear they now want a free trade agreement on goods rather like the Canada deal. And that sounds in many ways good. And there'll be a lot of people, um, you know, in manufacturing, etc., the car industry, where, you know, goods go back and forth across borders, who will say, well, this is potentially a very good thing. Question is... What are we being expected to pay for it? And I mean, on top of, of course, uh, the 40 billion that was agreed to before Christmas. But what we're actually talking about here is a massive concession on fishing, i.e. allowing uh, EU boats to catch about 80 percent by value of the fish in our waters. Um, Perhaps uh, concessions on immigration um, and for us to obey all the same rules as the rest of the EU so that we can't be competitive. So, you know, you've got to weigh this up. Is it a price worth paying? And I'm going to go to Northern Ireland, to Ross Lee in County Fermanagh, and I'm going to ask Paddy, who's a brand new caller to the LBC, that question. Good evening, Paddy. Hi, Nigel. How are you? I'm well, thanks. So what do you think? Well, i just got a quick question for you. If, and I'm assuming you've already have, calculated the percentage of people within England and Wales that have voted for Brexit when you exclude Scotland and the north of Ireland, there's a much higher percentage of people within England that would agree with Brexit. Do you agree with that? Well, if you took London out too, Paddy, you'd be amazed at the result. Yes, yes. So it's quite clear then there's a difference of opinion from the people of north of Ireland and Scotland from England. Um, Well, there was at the time of the referendum... Um, okay. But we but we took a collective decision as a united a kingdom. Yes. Well to, be, well, to be honest, as you know, I actually come from Rossley, not Rosley, um, yeah. and that's half a mile from the border. So the impact of this decision made by people sitting in Luton or in Bedford or Southampton mm. or wherever has a massive impact upon me and my family. And that decision for me... For years growing up, I have understood that there's always been a difference of opinion from the consensus in the north of Ireland and the UK. Mm. And it's quite clear from Brexit that this consensus is no longer amicable. So if the people of England want Brexit and want to leave the EU, all the best. Good luck to you. And I wish you all the best in the future. But don't drag us into that decision. I'll tell you what, you Paddy. An issue, if I'll you tell you what, issue, Paddy. If you have an issue with immigration, <laughs> why don't you deal with that in England? Why do you need to drag the Irish into that? i I tell you what, Paddy. Only one country, arguably only one country, has lost more money and more jobs through the common fisheries policy than the United Kingdom, and that right, is the Republic of Ireland. You have lost... You have lost... Ireland has lost... Ireland has lost... Tens and tens of billions of potential income. In fact, Ireland has lost more right. in lost fishing revenues than she ever right. got back in EU subsidies. Yes, and we have gained a lot more from peace in our country. We have gained a lot more from the community. Oh, so what did the EU so, 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 well, have to do with on. the peace process? Tell me. Well, let me tell you one thing. What did the people in Birmingham... Do you think the people in Birmingham voted for Brexit because of fisheries? When, when was the last time a person in Birmingham seen a fish coming uh, from, Paddy, from Norway Paddy, or something? Do you know what I mean? We voted. Oh, sorry, sorry. We voted for sovereignty. We voted to run our own affairs. Right. Now, you, so, I, so, I, so, I, what I, are you? I, what is your suggestion then for Northern Ireland? Well, what are you I, saying I, should I happen? What, I respect your sovereignty. You need to respect my sovereignty, and you need to respect the consensus and the Good Friday Agreement, which the British government signed up to. If you think that you want to leave the UK or leave the EU, that's fine. Put it down to a vote in the north of Ireland. Make it very clear. But don't you back away from it and say we're all in this together. At the end of the we day, are. The England, England voted quite clearly for Brexit, but the UK did not. 
there was a quite a significant... Well, I think you'll find, I think you'll find that 52 to 48, 52 to 48, we did. So is it, is it your political goal to get Northern Ireland out of the United Kingdom? No, my political goal is to keep the peace in my country. Right. And the Americans did a very good job of brokering that. Huge concessions no, were no, made. On, actually, huge concessions wrong. were made on either actually, side. You're, you're actually wrong. And there's not huge concessions. If you understand the situation where um, certain parts of those involved in the conflict are no longer eligible for due legal process. Well, it was quite clearly a problem with the whole situation. There should have been a truth commission. People, people from both well, sides... I tell you what, Paddy, I'm not going to go back over... On. I'm not going to go back over the good. I'm not going to go back over the good. But I would say this to you, Paddy. I would say this to you that wherever we all go with this, wherever we all go with this, I'm arguing to you tonight that the issue of the common fisheries policy, both for the United Kingdom and for the Republic of Ireland, has been something that has caused us considerable loss. And that's the only point I'm really making, and it does apply in the Irish context as well. I'm going to move on. Steve is a new caller to the show from Southampton. Good evening, Steve. Oh, hi there, Nigel. Yeah, I don't know what Paddy's on about, because if, you were a, if he was a small boat fisherman like we are on the south coast, he would realise what the common fisheries policy has done to us. I'm sure you know yourself, as you know, being out on yeah, the Yeah, so Steve, yourself. tell me your story. Well, you know, we run small boats in the Solent area. Yep. And um, at the moment, in my own case, I've been a bass specialist mainly. I mainly caught bass, line caught mainly. On, ro- on rod and line, yeah? Uh, um, well, on long lines, you know, short yep. lines. Yep. Um, and the thing is, if, you, if you've been a specialist or like that or you've been a shell fisherman, then what happens is, and the public doesn't realise this, Nigel, is your licence gets capped, which means that it gets restricted and you're only able to catch about... 12 boxes of fish of pressure stock a year not a month a year so if anything happens to your other fishery say you have to stop uh, fishing for bass or or shellfish or whatever you cannot go into um, a pressure stock fishery so it basically means you can't run your boat and that's happened what the public doesn't realize that's happened because of the common fisheries policy because we've only got four percent of the available quota so you know when i hear people like paddy going on about it i know i know so i mean do you feel steve do you feel that literally your living is being taken away from you well the potential's being eroded all the time i mean i'm i'm scraping by i'm not a big player but i'm scraping by and when the bass season starts you know i can just about get by but the potential has been eroded yeah. and uh, you can't d- diversify uh, and we're we're under attack from all quarters so uh, it's so ironic that you know, the eu boats can fish right up to <laughs> our you know inshore waters yeah. so we're never going to get more fish if these guys are, are taking no away. and and what about the anglers steve all down that south coast there are people running pleasure boats, people collecting baits for anglers. And there's, you know, three quarters of a million of us that regularly go sea angling. Yeah. Um, and, and we, under EU rules now, are not allowed for the whole of this year to take a single bass home for tea. So yeah. do you know what's happening, Steve? Yeah. We're not bothering to go. And people well, are closing down that. and losing uh, their... D- and if there was an environmental reason for it, we yeah. might say, OK, but I can't see what it is. Well, no, I mean, on the angling side, I've got no problem with what anglers do. I, I do have to agree to differ with you on some points on that, Nigel, about the, you know, because the, the angling lobby as such were trying to reallocate bass solely for angling. Per- I know, I know, I know. that. that, that, that so. I, I understand there's always been a conflict between anglers yeah. and commercial fishermen. Yeah, it doesn't need but, to be, but there has been. But yeah, no, well, I agree with that. So, yeah. Steve, you know, basically... Basically, um, it, this to you would be too big a price for the Prime Minister to pay, yeah? Absolutely. And I mean, they, they, they sold us out 40 years ago, whatever, and they're doing it again. I think that, he, that she needs to stand up, Theresa May needs to stand up against Tusk and say, no, that is not a yeah, price prepared to pay. Yeah, I agree. And you know what? Yep. If she did it, Steve, and if Michael Gove did it, the yep. country would be right behind them, wouldn't they? Yeah. And just one more thing, Nigel. I always yep. say to people, look at Iceland. If they join the EU tomorrow, what would happen? You know yourself what would happen. Mm. They mm. would carve up the fisheries between well, every other member state. Well, Steve, why do you think Iceland have now withdrawn their application yeah. to join the European Union? Why yeah. do you think Greenland 
left the European community back in 1985, Absolutely. and why do you think Norway repeatedly voted in referendums yeah. not to join the thing, because they've seen what's happened to Britain and Ireland. It's been a disaster. Steve, what's the public... Norway? The public, Steve, are on your side, and what we and thank you for the call. And what we now need on this very, very important symbolic issue is for Michael Gove and Theresa May to stand up for what is right. And what is right is that we should have access to our own territorial waters, our own industry, our own jobs, and we should be putting in place a much better environmental policy than currently exists under this awful. CFP. You've been listening to The Nigel Farage Show live from New York. I'm back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, coming up at 10 tonight.